Now at that time, the slaves of the Sakians came to be out of hand. Ugh, my gosh. back. This is Buddhist Books Podcast, episode 148, Tipitaka, part 82, in which I will recite the fourth of the four Patidesaniya, or confessions, or rules that must be confessed. It's one of the categories of rules. The sixth category um, that we've gotten to so far in the Sutta Vibhanga of the Vinaya Pitaka of the Tipitaka or Tripitaka for the Sanskrit folk. How is everyone? <clears throat> Second episode on the new YouTube channel. Just a little reminder if you haven't yet, uh, do please feel free to subscribe to the new channel. Um, Special guest today, Vajra Yogini. She has been a guest on this podcast before. And uh, of course, she is more related to Vajrayana, Tibetan Vajrayana specifically. She was a friend of Padma Sambhava. And of course, we will be getting back to the recitals of the life and liberation of Padma Sambhava on episode 150. So, Two more episodes, and then we'll be back doing that. Um, for today, suffice to say, uh, her name Vajra Yogini means thunder or diamond, thunderbolt or diamond is Vajra, and Yogini is a female yogi, a practitioner of yoga. Um, and uh, yeah, okay, that, that's enough for now. We'll uh, dive into more of that sort of tantric stuff. In the future, for now, we'll stay with the pre-sectarian early Buddhism. <clears throat> and I will move immediately into the recital. Just to be different. Confession. Pati Desaniya. Four. At one time, the enlightened one, the Lord was staying among the Sakyans at Kapilavatu in the Banyan Monastery. Now you remember Banyans? Yeah, that tree, the cows underneath, that was taken in Bihar on the road from Bodhgaya to Rajgir, which of course would have been the same road that Lord Buddha would have taken to meet Mahavir in Rajgir, or vice versa. But I won't get into that just yet. But if you if your curiosity is piqued, uh, you can click there. You know. Okay. <clears throat> now at that time, the slaves of the Sakyans came to be out of hand. Ugh, my gosh. Problems that people have in sixth century BCE Bihar, right? Oh, let's just keep reading. Sakyan women wanted to make a meal in jungle lodgings. The slaves of the Sakyans heard that Sakyan women were desirous of making a meal in jungle lodgings. They infested the way. Wow. Wow. Different time. Sakyan women taking sumptuous solid food, soft food, went off to a jungle lodging. The slaves of the Sakyans, having issued forth, robbed the Sakyan women and violated them. Well, that's not good. The Sakyans, having issued forth, having seized these thieves together with the goods, looked down upon criticized, spread it about, saying, quote, 
How can these reverend sirs not announce that thieves are living in the monastery? End quote. Monks heard these sakyans, who three dots spread it about, three dots. Then these monks told this matter to the Lord. Then the Lord, on this occasion, in this connection, having given reason to talk, addressed the monks, saying, quote, on account of this, monks, I will lay down a rule of training founded on ten reasons. For the excellence of the order, that's reason number one, three dots, because the Polytech Society wants to keep us in suspense and not tell us what the ten reasons were. Hmm. Uh, future Edward, Editor Edward, um, would you mind finding that and splicing it in right here? I will make known the course of training for monks, founded on ten reasons, for the excellence of the order, for the comfort of the order, for the restraint of evil-minded men, for the ease of well-behaved monks, for the restraint of the kinkers belonging to the here and now for the combating of the cankers belonging to other worlds, for the benefit of non-believers, for the increase in the number of believers, for establishing Dhamma indeed, for following the rules of restraint. All right, well, hopefully you just heard all ten of the reasons that Lord Buddha gave. Okay, continuing. And thus, monks... This rule of training should be set forth. Whatever are those jungle lodgings that are held to be dangerous, frightening, whatever monk in such lodgings not announced beforehand, having accepted solid food or soft food within a monastery with his own hand, should eat it or partake of it, it should be confessed by that monk saying, quote within quotes, I have fallen, your reverences, in a blameworthy matter, unbecoming, which ought to be confessed, I confess it. End quote within quotes, end quote. And thus this rule of training for monks came to be laid down by the Lord. Hmm. Now at that time a certain monk came to be ill in a jungle lodging. People taking solid food or soft food set out for the jungle lodging. Then these people spoke thus to this monk, quote, eat honored sir, end quote. Then that monk thinking, quote, it is forbidden by the Lord having accepted in a jungle lodging solid food or soft food with one's own hand to eat it to partake of it, end quote. Being scrumptious, being scrupulous, excuse me, did not accept it. He was unable to enter for alms food. He became famished. Then this monk told this matter to the monks. The monks told this matter to the Lord. Then the Lord, on this occasion, in this connection, having given reason to talk, addressed the monks, saying, I allow... Quote, I allow you, monks, I allow monks, an ill monk, having accepted in a jungle lodging solid food or soft food with his own hand, to eat it, to partake of it. And thus, monks, this rule of training should be set forth. Whatever are those jungle lodgings that are held to be dangerous, frightening, Whatever monk in such lodgings not announced beforehand, having accepted solid food or soft food within a monastery with his own hand, should eat it or partake of it, if he is not ill, it should be confessed by that monk, saying, quote within quotes, I have fallen, your reverences, into a blameworthy matter, unbecoming, which ought to be confessed. I confess it. End quote within quotes. End quote. Those jungle lodgings means the last lodging called, quote, jungle, space quote, just teasing them, space. 
Anyway, it is 500 Danus measures away from the village. Away from the villages in parentheses. So Danus. All right. Whatever that means. So a certain amount of measurement away from the village. Dangerous means if in a monastery, in the precincts of a monastery, a place where thieves are halting is seen, a place where they are eating is seen, a place where they are resting is seen, a place where they are sitting down is seen, a place where they are lying down is seen. Frightening means if in a monastery, in the precincts of a monastery, people injured by thieves are seen, parentheses, people, and parentheses, plundered are seen, parentheses, people, and parentheses, beaten down are seen. Whatever means monk is to be understood in this case. In such lodgings as those means, in lodgings like those. Not announced means there is parentheses announced space and parentheses in five parentheses ways, but and parentheses this means not announced. Let's try that without the parentheses and with the parentheses, you know, let's just see what's going on here. Not announced means there is announced in five, this means not announced. Okay, so if we include what the Polytech Society added, not announced means there is announced in five ways, but this means not announced. Either way, it does not make sense. Okay, I'll just keep reading. Maybe it'll clarify itself in context. I doubt it. Setting aside a monastery, the precincts of a monastery, parentheses as and parentheses announced, this is called not announced. Hmm. Announced means whatever woman or man having come into come to a monastery, to the precincts of a monastery, declares, quote the quotes, honored sirs, they will convey solid food, soft food for so and so, end quote within quotes. If it becomes dangerous, it should be pointed out that it is dangerous. If it becomes frightening, it should be pointed out that it is frightening. If he speaks, saying, quote, then quotes, let him be, honored sir, he will convey it, and, quote, then quotes, the thieves should be told, quote, then quotes, people are serving here, go away, and, quote, then quotes, yeah, that should take care of it. If it is announced in regard to kanji, that ingredients, that's C-O-N-J-E-Y, not K-A-N-J-I, um, Ingredients may be conveyed for that. This is called announced. If it is announced in regard to a meal that the ingredients may be conveyed for that, this is called announced. If it is announced in regard to sol solid food that the ingredients may be conveyed for that, this is called announced. If it is announced in regard to a family, the person who of that family conveys solid food or soft food, this is called announced. If it is announced in regard to a village, the person who in that village conveys solid food or soft food, this is called announced. If it is announced in regard to a guild, the person who in that guild conveys solid food or soft filled food, this is called announced. Solid food means three dots. Soft food means three dots. Meat. All right. Uh, within a monastery means when a monastery is fenced in inside a monastery, the precincts when it is not fenced in. Not ill means he is able to walk for alms food. Ill means he is not able to walk for alms food. If it is not announced, if he is not ill, parentheses and, and parentheses accepts it, thinking, quote, I will eat, I will partake of, end quote, there is an offense of wrongdoing. For every mouthful, there is an offense which ought to be confessed. If he thinks that it is not announced when it is not announced, parentheses and, and parentheses, having accepted solid food or soft food with his own hand within the monastery when he is not ill, eats it or partakes of it, there is an offense which ought to be confessed. If he is in doubt as to whether it is not announced, four dots, just to be different. Three dots gets boring after a while. If he thinks that it is announced when it is not announced, three dots ought to be confessed. 
If he accepts for the sake of nutrient, parentheses, food to be eaten, end parentheses, during a watch of the night, during seven days, during life, there is an offensive wrongdoing. For every mouthful, there is an offensive wrongdoing. If he thinks that it is not announced when it is announced, there is an offensive wrongdoing. If he is in doubt as to whether it is announced, there is an offensive wrongdoing. If he thinks that it is announced when it is announced, there is no offense. All right. There is no offense if it is announced, if he is ill, if he eats the remainder of parentheses, a meal and parentheses, if it was announced or of one who was ill, if having accepted it outside the monastery, he makes use of it inside the monastery, if he makes use of a root or bark or a leaf or a flower or a fruit growing there, if when there is reason, he makes use of parentheses, food to be eaten and parentheses during a watch of the night, during seven days, during life, if he is mad, if he is the first wrongdoer, the fourth meaning the fourth offense, which needs to be confessed. This reminds me a little bit of uh, the time that actually I was wondering why my intuition uh, thought that Vajra Yogini would be a good guest for today. In the very spot where they say that Lord Padmasambhava um, sat and meditated in the charnel grounds uh, for a period of time and where he, uh, let's say, uh, converted the Dakinis or scary flying ghost women, basically, into uh, to Buddhism and they became kind of like gods or saints in uh, Padmasambhava's particular line of, of Vajrayana Buddhism and thus basically all of Tibetan Buddhism, hence Vajrayogini being a uh, very popular figure there. She was one of these Dakinis. I don't know if you can see, she's actually holding Padmasambhava's wand that has the three heads on it, the head uh, for the realm of desire, the head for the realm of of form and the head for the realm of formlessness. The one that's a skull is the formlessness. Anyway, um, so I was sitting there meditating. I We had directed the, the taxi to this one particular spot, longitude and latitude wise, and, uh, you know, driven there and I, it's right here. Okay, pull over. And then I walked following the map and I sat down on that longitude and latitude point where they say was where he sat. And there's a forest here. You can see some of what it looked like, thin trees. And uh, long story short, I was there with my wife and our friend. And if I recall correctly, something like 20 kids on like motorbikes, probably between the ages of like 12 and 17, maybe, uh, came from, you know, a ways away and kind of circled us and uh, offered very kindly to, you know, for a few hundred rupees, um, you know, have me get on the back of one of the motorbikes behind one of the 12 year olds and have my wife get on the back of one of the other motorbikes behind one of the 12 year olds and our friend, uh, you know, and to be driven far away from there where supposedly there was a, I mean, there was, I looked it up. Uh, there was a temple dedicated to, you know, this these events in the life of Padmasambhava. And, um, yeah, I said no thank you and uh, said, you know, indicated let's get back in the taxi. So, yeah, it just reminded me of that. Um, and that, that was kind of in the same area that was right outside of Bodh Gaya. So that, that was kind of at least within mm, probably two or three hours drive of wherever this was, that this was happening uh, there in Bihar. So, I mean, from one perspective, it's like, why didn't the monks and Lord Buddha help the slave women to steal the food and, you know, declare a new socialist, uh, you know, 
yeah, you know, you could kind of go that way with it. Um, but on the other hand, from a practical perspective, you don't want to like sit down and have your your Buddhist gathering in a place where you know that there's people who steal and violate people, right? So, okay, so you have to announce it. You have to let everyone know, hey, there's thieves nearby. That's the rule. You can't say, hey, the monks are gathering in the jungle over there, so feel free to bring food to them without saying, oh, and by the way, there's thieves in those woods or restless slave women, as they called them. Or, you know, so it's, it's, it's an odd one. This is an odd one. Um, but there it is, the fourth rule um, the breaking of which needs to be confessed. So here we go. These are. This is the key. So at the end of every section, there's a key to help every uh, to help the monks who are reciting this to remember the rules. Here we go. Venerable ones, recited are the four rules for offenses which ought to be confessed. Concerning them, I ask the venerable ones. I hope that you are quite pure in this matter. A second time I ask, I hope that you are quite pure in this matter. A third time I ask, I hope that you are quite pure in this matter. The, vener the venerable ones are quite pure in this matter. Therefore, they are silent. Thus do I understand this. Told are the offenses which ought to be confessed. All right, so there was no key, just a, a closing of the section. I guess since there were only four, then they don't do like a little clever thing to remember. He jumped and then there was a dolphin and Larry, you know, like something like that. Okay, well, you know, um, sometimes, sometimes things that are taken for granted in sixth century BCE or indeed you know, uh, 18th century CE are a little different um, than, uh, than, than the values that we have today. But it seems like a practical rule. If you know that there are thieves and bad people who attack and steal things and worse in an area, don't use that spot for your gathering where innocent lay followers are going to be bringing food to monks. Right? All right. Are you enlightened yet? Oh, oh, I'm feeling it. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Total enlightenment. No, these are the rules. Uh, the teachings come later. Um, tune back in a few months if you're not interested in the rules. I'm reading them because nobody else does. These are the uh, things that pretty much everybody says you can skip. Or they give like a Cliff Notes version. Yeah, in the first section they say don't kill, don't have sex, don't steal, don't pretend to have superpowers. And then in the second section there's a bunch of rules that are basically just don't be weird. You know, like they, people brush by it real quick. So for whatever reason, I'm taking the time to read every word that wasn't replaced by three dots by the Polytech Society. <laughs> Thank you, Polytech Society. And thank you, Vajra Yogini. And I look forward to reading more about you in the future when we get to Vajrayana. Um, here's uh, a couple pictures from the Vajra Yogini temple in um, Farpang. Am I getting that right? Uh, in uh, Nepal that I visited back in 2018, early 2018, before I came to India. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I had, I had a, a, a vision at one point that involved her, but I won't get into that right now. Um, in, in the future, perhaps, perhaps. Uh, for now, I will go ahead and close in the usual manner for these episodes, and thank you for going on this ride with me. <clears throat> to the north and to the south, to the east and to the west, 
to the spirits of light among us and to the spirits below. We send out our reverent love and compassion. May all beings be happy. May all beings be serene. May all beings be in peace. Oh. Until next time.